So all these YouTube creators, myself included, who are working really hard and trying to make it big, hit the jackpot, you know, kind of go viral and be a famous celebrity and get all that money and stuff, who are churning out hundreds and hundreds of videos on YouTube to get noticed. And Kim Kardashian made one video, put it on Xtube, and now she's worth multiple millions. I think I'm on the wrong site, and for that kind of money, not gonna lie, I'm tempted. Roll it. Ooh, girl, it's the Kiki. The house don't work. Yes. Girl, bye. I'll see you all shade. Girl, the library is open. Okay, hello everybody. Hope you're well indeed. Kimberly Kardashian, Mama Jo. Ugh, honestly, that's been stuck in my head for days. God damn you, Drag Race! So, as I said last week, this episode would be out late because I have been away. Um, I, I was away for a very important weekend. It involved me wearing a tuxedo, which in the UK is known as black tie. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what I do. The name says it. Chris says it. Secret Agent 007. MI5. Huh. Yeah, okay, maybe not. So yeah, I'm apologizing already now that it was late, but yeah, soz about it. And actually next week's one might not be particularly on time as well because I've just taken on a couple of extra shifts at work over the weekend. So I will do my best for you because I don't want it to be late three times in a row, okay? Okay. So I'm gonna be as quick as possible because my dinner is in the oven. I am absolutely starving and I have been at home for a mere few hours. So let's turn the party, shall we? So we are here to talk about RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9, episode five. I can't remember what the title of this one is. I think it's just called Kardashian the Musical. Still kind of bitter that they're so wealthy. Honestly, I am kind of tempted. If I knew, put it this way, if I knew that I would get millions and millions and millions of dollars and live like very comfortable because of a sex tape, I'd probably do it, right? Wouldn't everyone? Thumbs up if you would do it to create like an empire on TV and have like everything you could ever want. Thumbs up. Also, while you're there, subscribe because I'm really close to 10,000 and I really want to get 10,000 subscribers. So let's let's do it. Okay, thank you. So we're gonna rattle through this one because um, a lot of the actual show was taken up by the production of the musical and there's not a whole lot to talk about that, I think. So we're gonna like blast through this one. So I'm sorry if this is quick and it's probably not gonna be quick me saying that now because I keep diverting and talking about random stuff. So sorry. So the girls come back into the workroom and Trinity is straight up cleaning that mirror. I think it's a little harsh that we didn't have a chance to read Charlie's message, but okay, like, I, you know, it is quite amusing that Trinity is just like, get, get that shit off, just get it off. I don't want to think about it no more. Nina is saying that she's getting um, annoyed with some queen's cockiness. And I think that is heavily implied towards Shay and Sasha because the cutaway keeps like implying that. But also don't forget that those uh, confessionals are filmed after the show is finished, like if they've been eliminated. So like, you know, if she is saying, oh, I want to see some of them go down, it might be because she's just been eliminated and she's like feeling bitter. So it might be a whole like craziness of nothing, but it might be something, I don't know, whatever. So the next day comes and Peppermint walks in and says, good morning, bitches. Right, okay, now not being funny, fricking called it, okay? Let's let's take a look, shall we? Let's, let's have a look, see what Chris says it said last week. That for the next few episodes, all the girls in team Aja are going to walk into the workroom every morning and say, good morning, bitches. So there we have it. Bitch called it. Okay. Are you a wizard? Not being funny, but I think I might be Sherlock Holmes. So we have a mini challenge this episode. Oh my God, I had kind of forgotten what they were all about. And also the pit crew make an appearance, which is, is this the first time they've made an appearance this season? Like episode five? I think it could be. So that's quite interesting really, isn't it? So the mini challenge is to take a selfie, a sexy selfie with the pit crew members. As mini challenges go, I think it's a little basic. Um, just because it's like they just get up in basic drag and they're like, oh look, a oh, picture. And most of them weren't even that interesting. Although Valentina's special mention, absolutely hilarious where she's like dressed up as Ms. Venezuela and then having like a, you know, Chola Homeboy kind of picture. That was really funny. Valentina is continuing to surprise me. I really like her. Also side note, what the fuck is Shay actually wearing? Because honestly that kind of looks like sort of Karma Miranda on crack after 20 cigarettes and trying to hide from the paparazzi. That whole thing, mama, no man. 
So Alexis wins, and because of this, she gets to choose the roles in the main challenge, which is Kardashian the Musical! Kimberly Kardashian, Mamager! I'm not gonna lie, it took me way too long to realise what Mamager was, because I don't watch the Kardashians, okay? So, like, it took me a long time to realise that Mamager was mum plus manager. Boom. I'm tired, okay? Just give me a break. So they're assigning roles, blah, 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 and Nina doesn't get Black China, um, and is given, I think, was it Chloe or Courtney, or one or the other, and she won't stop bitching about it. Oh my God, like, just sets up for like the whole episode. Every time you see Nina, she's like, I didn't get Black China. I want Black China. Why didn't I get Black China? I didn't unpack my stuff because I thought I was gonna go home first. I didn't think I wouldn't get Black China. That role was made for me. Bitch. Get over it. So the girls rehearse and Nina is still bitching. I didn't get a black china. I want a black china. You get the idea. Some of the queens are like having some issues with the steps and stuff, but nothing major. The, the whole rehearsal is basically just Nina. Black china. So the next day comes and it is performance day. And while the girls are getting ready, Eureka decides to um, clear the air with Sasha and Valentina and goes over to them and apologizes for the crack she made about eating disorders. And we have this moment and we have Having a lot of these moments, like every episode, there seems to be like a big moment, especially when the girls are like getting ready. They have this moment where they talk about eating disorders and how Sasha in her early 20s had um, anorexia, how Valentina currently is dealing with um, anorexia and how Shay had also battled with bulimia. I think these moments are very important and I think it's good that the show is airing them and that the girls are talking about this so openly because I think a lot of things they're talking about are things that aren't particularly talked about, especially on uh, you know primetime television in its sort of raw sort of form. I think in the media, eating disorders are very much attached to women um, when in fact it ha affects everyone, but you know, you don't hear so much about men being anorexic, men being bulimic. Um, if you do, it's sort of like, well, it's not even that you do. I, I hear so infrequently of it but we all know that it happens. I think it's very good that they have come out very outspokenly, you know, these very strong characters who are saying, I have my weak moments and I have dealt with an eating disorder. I definitely think more needs to be done to help men with, you know, battling eating disorders and battling other, you know, disorders, mental, uh, mental health problems and, you know, just everything you can possibly think of, a lot of it for men is kind of swept under the rug these days and, you know, you're just told to like man up and get on with it. So yeah, I don't want to get on my soapbox with that one, but I think it's very good that they're talking about it. And I think Sasha put it well when she said, this is RuPaul's best group therapy race, because I think it's very important to be open and honest with your friends and get the support that you need. Put it this way, I have seen one of my friends be hospitalized because of anorexia, and it is so important that, you know, you know that there is a support network there for you. So that's my two cents. So we have the big performance and um, I think it is a, a great little skit. I think there's lots to see and do. Um, although it's, uh, let's be real, cause it's it's not as good as Bitch Perfect that they did a couple of years. Was that, how many years ago was that? Shit me, that was last year. That was absolutely phenomenal. Um, they're trying to sort of recreate it, but I think they've sort of not really captured the same kind of essence. But that being said, I really enjoyed it, although I don't watch Keeping Up the Kardashians, so I wasn't able to really make those kind of connections with the characters. Obviously, I know Britney, I know Paris, I know Lindsay, and I know a lot of the Kardashians by face, um, but not all of them, and I certainly do not know their personality types. As such, I think there was only so much that I could really take from this sort of, you know, musical, um, but... I still enjoyed it nonetheless. Some of the standouts for me were Peppermint. I thought her Britney was very funny. Alexis, uh, her, um, what is her name? Jenna, Chris Jenner. Her Chris Jenner was really funny. I thought she totally captured her. Um, I actually thought Nina did very well. I know she ended up in the bottom three, but I actually thought she did all right. And also Shay, I thought was a good standout as well as Black China. I didn't get Black China. I wanted Black China. Why didn't you give me Black China, Alexis? So for the runway, the girls are wearing fur, although it is faux fur, don't worry, because most of them have shaved off all their fur before they tucked. Also, before we get into it, can we have a side note for Trinity? Does she not look like identical to Kimora when she went home? Did Kimora give her that outfit? And was Trinity like, oh, I know, yeah, this worked really well the first time around. Let me like wear it again. 
So for me, the standouts on the runway were Sasha, I really liked that sort of Russian twist. Um, Nina, I thought was very cool, very, you know, ghetto fab, banji, but still kind of like expensive looking. Valentina, that was gorgeous, but we expect nothing less from Valentina on the runway. Um, I actually quite like Paris. I'm not entirely sure why, because the colours are a little clashing, but there was something kind of like fun about it. And I also liked Shays. So we have the critiques and they're like, oh, Peppermint, you are really good as Brittany, but you look nothing like her. And I'm like, duh. Alexis's outfit was heavily critiqued. I think it actually was looking really good on the runway before she opened the, the top to reveal the dress because beforehand it was looking really like, really expensive, like, you know, New York socialite kind of thing. And then with the dress, it, I think may have like ruined it a little bit, but that whole, the fur thing, I thought looked very expensive. Um, and I actually quite liked the shoes. So yeah, like, okay. So then we get to Nina and we have the whole like dramatics again because she's like, I want a black China, I didn't get black China. And they're sort of saying, girl, you need to get over it, blah, blah, blah. And there's this whole like moment where she is vulnerable and she has like, you know, this little single solitary black teardrop coming down. And I was just like, oh my God. I mean, honestly, it was like, you couldn't script it to look that good. I'm not being funny. Has Nina been on stage yet where she hasn't had her makeup run? Because I can't remember. I mean, honestly, a single black teardrop just rolling down the cheek. It's like something from a Francois Truffaut film in the Nouvelle Vague. Do you know what I'm saying? <coughs> honestly, Francois Truffaut is a really good director. Go check him out. Hashtag cultured fish. So yeah, they talk to Nina about like stuff and they manage to throw in sabotage, self-sabotage. And I'm just like, wait, wait, wait. Is Rue gonna say, you, you overcome your inner saboteur. I'm so proud of thick. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, inner saboteur. Get on up. Honestly, if one of the queens in season 10 is not called Inner Saboteur, I will be writing a very strongly worded letter. An absolute outrage to VH1 and RuPaul say, oh, it's outrageous. So yada, 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 Shay wins the challenge. That's two challenges back to back. Okay, girl, she doing good. Technically, Shay is now in the lead. Didn't expect that because she was kind of like going under my radar a little bit. And now I'm like, oh, hey, like, bitch is turning it out. So she's doing really well. I'm definitely paying attention to Shay. Cynthia and Farah fall into the bottom two. And if you watch Untucked, it's quite emotional because they like, you know, Cynthia gave Farah her first break. So it's like, you know, mentor versus student, you know, who's going to win? It's like Star Wars and Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader all over again. So they lip sync for their life to a Megan Trainor song, who by the way, is on the judging panel. Also, side note, Chodrick Hall is back. Must be a bit awkward to come back just for one episode when he was like on the panel last year, but I don't know why he left. Does anyone know why he went? But yeah, back to Megan Trainor. She's wearing a unicorn onesie. Okay, obviously this came out last weekend, so it was like the, the 22nd or something of April. What happened to also come out that weekend related to unicorns? Oh look, the Starbucks unicorn frappuccino. Bloody unicorn frappuccino has been like doing the rounds on Instagram and Facebook like crazy. I'm not being funny, but to have a unicorn onesie Megan Trenor on RuPaul's Drag Race, at the same time a unicorn frappuccino comes out at Starbucks, not gonna lie, Ruluminati confirmed. I think Nina might be right. There is an entire conspiracy going on and RuPaul is trying to make us think it's just paranoia. I am on to you, Ru. I'm gonna be wearing my aluminum foil hat soon. I just need to fashion it out of some bako foil and then I'm going to destroy the Ru world order. I'm quite liking these Ruluminati jokes. Are you? How many have you got? Let me know in the comments below. So the lip sync is actually quite fun. I really like the song. I think it's a very good lip sync. Uh, the question is, who won? Well, I'm tempted to say Farah. Although Cynthia did a very good job, I just kind of thought that Farah's lip sync skills were a little bit tighter and I thought her moves, although may have not matched Cynthia's energy, I thought that with that, with the stronger lip sync itself, uh, probably would have tipped her over to, you know, stay around. So the girls finish and Rue like has this little minion runner run up and is like, Girl, you need to fix your wig line. And then Rue very dramatically is like, ladies, I need a moment to have a think about this. So she toddles off set, quickly like readjusts the wig and then comes back and is like, hmm, maybe we could turn this into a moment. So she goes, ladies, I've made my decision. Eureka, would you come up to the stage? And I'm not being funny, poor Eureka, she can barely walk and then she's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta get up a step. Gotta get up this step. And then toddle my way down the runway, like with, honestly, 
That's so brutal. They could have just told her at the back of the stage and be like, be done with you. So Rue announces that she has heard from the doctor that Eureka is not well enough to perform to the best of her abilities and Rue, in good conscience, cannot keep her in the competition. So unfortunately, she has to say sashay away to Eureka and she spares Cynthia and Farah from the chopping block. Very emotional moment, because obviously only one other queen has ever been properly booted off the show, which was Willem, and this time around, at least Eureka didn't break no rules. Okay, about, you know, getting deliveries. Mm -hmm. So yes, Eureka has to be sent home because of her injury that she received in the cheerleading challenge, which Charlie also got an injury in that challenge. And I'm just wondering how many other queens got an injury in that challenge. That challenge was so pointless. I think it was not executed well. I don't think it really showed off anything of the Queen's abilities and ultimately it just seems to have like injured them all. These girls fall like dominoes, dominoes. Oh, I should probably be careful. I don't want to get like a copyright strike. Yeah, because I fucking sound like Nicki Minaj. So yeah, Eureka has to go home, but Rue very graciously says, look, you have an open invitation to return for season 10. So that's pretty exciting because then we know one of the queens already. And at least then, you know, she doesn't have her dreams dashed because she was doing pretty well. I, I did enjoy Eureka. So yeah, I'm very sad to see Eureka go, but you know, you got to understand when you've like busted a knee like that, you, you, you need time to convalesce. Very good word. Also PS, so you know in Untucked, Nina spent like half of Untucked just like staring at the wall. When Eureka is being announced as that she's going home, there's a bit where the camera is like panning. You can see Nina has turned around and she's facing that goddamn wall again. I don't know what she's got going on with that wall, but I'm feeling very uncomfortable. I think I need an adult because she getting a little bit too handsy, do you know what I'm saying? So yes, Eureka goes home. Rue allows Cynthia and Farah to stay. And that's the situation we are presented with. What is also really sad at the end is that obviously I said last week that I was really enjoying Eureka's kind of like, you know, right at the end, poking her head back and being like, bye. And I was really enjoying that. And then suddenly she's going home and I feel like I've jinxed it. And I'm really sorry if that is what I've done. So sorry about it. So yeah, very sad. I am going to miss Eureka, but hopefully we'll see her again in season 10. So I think that is everything. Overall, a very fun episode, although I wasn't able to really connect with the musical very much because I just simply don't know about the characters, so I can't tell who did well and whatever, but I still enjoyed it. Do let me know what you thought in the comments below. Please get the conversation started. Uh, we can have a bit of fun. Drop me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and follow me on Instagram, or Twitter, or Facebook, all that jazz. Search for Chris says you should find me. And for next week, I am very much determined to get this up sooner than this, but as I say, I'm taking on extra shifts this weekend, so hopefully I will be able to sort something out for you. But until next time, guys, be good, be safe, keep out of trouble, stay fierce, stay fabulous, and next week, darling, next week, we are preparing ourselves for the Snatch Game! Yes! Girl, they had better turn it out. So, Snatch Game next week, guys. Until then, be good, be safe, keep out of trouble, and I will see you guys later. Take care, love you, bye! 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 <laughs> so, I'm tired, I've busted my ankle. I have to be at work at 5.45 in the morning tomorrow, and it's already quite late. However, nonetheless, it's time to kiki! Let's go!